right now. I know what it feels like for those people to be hurting, to be wondering what happens next, to be lost. A local woman's story of survival. She beat the odds during the devastating earthquake in Haiti back in 2010, only to relive the horror this weekend as an even stronger one hits her home country, causing widespread death and devastation. Her story and the latest from Haiti coming up in just a few minutes. But first, our top story tonight, the Texas Supreme Court ruling in favor of Governor Greg Abbott and Attorney General Ken Paxton temporarily banning mask mandates here in Bear County as well as Dallas County. This means the mask mandate issued for public schools by Bear County leaders last week is no longer in effect, at least for now. A local district judge will determine during an injunction hearing tomorrow whether the local governments can mandate masks. The same goes for Dallas County, which has an injunction hearing set for August 24th. The city of San Antonio issuing a statement this evening in response to the court's ruling. City attorney Andy Segovia saying in part, quote, the governor cannot use his emergency powers to suspend laws that provide local entities the needed flexibility to act in an emergency. His suspension authority is meant to facilitate action, not prohibit it, end quote. You can read more on that statement and the ongoing issues and find a growing list of local school districts now responding to that ruling right now on our website at ksat.com. A bar fight ends with gunfire. That shooting at the Boom Boom Sports Bar off South New Braunfels claiming multiple lives just passed through this morning. Yeah, police tell us they are still searching for the responsible person for taking those lives. The night team's uh, John, John Paul Baraja spoke with family members of those who were killed today. Five people shot, three died, and two are still fighting for their lives in the hospital. It all happened at the Boom Boom Sports Bar on the city's east side. Now my daughter, she just gonna have her dad. <laughs> And I'm gonna have to tell her that later on, and I don't know how. And, and that was the love of my life. We've been together for almost seven years. Erica Candela now has to raise her three-year-old daughter alone. Her baby girl not just losing a father in the shooting, but an aunt as well. I'm gonna make sure that model in April get justice. Police say the shooting happened at 3.23 in the morning because of a fight between two people that broke out after hours and then spilled into the parking lot. My son just tried to break it, break it up, and he didn't know anybody. And and then somebody just started uh, shooting and he got caught, shot in the head. Dan Martinez says his son was rushed to the hospital but did not survive. His only son gone at the age of 28. And with police still looking for a suspect, all families involved have the same plea. If you know something, please, because my, my brother lost his life, not only my brother, to other people. I know it's a brother and a sister as well that they lost their life. And we just want justice for our family. If this was your family member, you would want it too. And the families we spoke to have already set up a memorial here outside the bar. They've got crosses up for the three people who lost their lives. Then over here, they've set up flowers and candles. And some of these candles even have personalized messages on them. This one saying, I love you, Mom. Rest in peace. Now, as for police, they are still investigating. They have not released a description of the suspect, but they did say that it was a male. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, Hope News. Thank you. Other top stories we've been following today. San Antonio police say they have a man in custody following a brief but deadly crime spree overnight. According to SAPD, a 65 year old man was changing his tire at the Texaco gas station on Palo Alto Road last night when 36 year old Jose Gonzalez made his way into that man's car. As the victim moved around to uh, cut the car to confront Gonzalez, officers say Gonzalez allegedly hit the gas, hitting and killing the man. Gonzalez then reportedly crashed into the side of the gas station before going inside, stripping down to his underwear, damaging several items and grabbing money from the cash register. Police later arriving, tasing him twice with little effect while they were trying to arrest him. Two officers were also kicked in the face in the process. Gonzalez was eventually cuffed and taken to the hospital. He is now facing a murder charge as well as two counts of assault on a public servant. On the south side this afternoon, a family is mourning the loss of a pet after their home was overcome by flames. The fire happened just after 1 p.m. off Archimedes Drive near East South Cross and I-37. Firefighters say the fire started in the kitchen and they had to attack the fire from the attic. The homeowner told firefighters he had two dogs inside. A large dog was found under blankets in a closet, thankfully alive. A smaller dog in the home could not be saved. It's unclear what caused the fire. 
And today we learned the name of the man who was shot and killed by SAPD officers after he allegedly shot an officer during a chase Friday afternoon. All of this uh, taking place off of Lakewood Drive, just west of Loop 410. Police say they were responding to a disturbance when they encountered an armed Stephen Prim, who then took off on a bike. As officers caught up with Prim, he allegedly shot at them, hitting one. That officer was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. Another officer later shot and killed Prim in a nearby field, according to Police Chief William McManus. No other injuries were reported. The destruction and rising death toll in Haiti caused by that 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit close to home for one woman here in San Antonio. 21-year-old Bethley Paul is the survivor of the massive earthquake which rocked the nation in 2010. I had the honor of speaking with her this afternoon about her survival and how this recent earthquake has triggered some painful memories. I heard this loud, like roaring, like loud roar out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I was just on the floor, you know, like the ceiling about this far away from my head. January 12, 2010, just after 4 o'clock, Bentley Paul's life changed forever. She was just 10 years old and tutoring in Haiti when a 7.0 magnitude earthquake caused her school building to collapse on top of her. Her best friend died next to her. The reason I knew it was her because I, I could feel her braids. Paul's leg stuck and broken in half under the rubble. So I tried to like yank at it and yank and yank and yank, but it wouldn't budge. She was trapped under debris for seven hours. Out of everyone screaming, yelling, like I could hear my mom's voice. My uncle kept digging and digging and digging. She says when she was rescued, they rushed her to an open field. You could hear the screams of the people just so hurt, like honestly, just... I don't know, you, it's a different kind of screen. Paul was flown to the United States for medical care and has been here thriving ever since. But fast forward to Saturday, August 14th, 2021. I wanted to scream because I didn't know how to deal with this emotion. Her home country rocked again, this time by an even stronger 7.2 magnitude earthquake. The death toll in the thousands with even more injured. Everything just flashed back, those, that pain, those screams, that like fear. Paul struggles with PTSD, but she says seeing that destruction makes her even more thankful to be alive. She wants her survival story to inspire those in Haiti to push through. Life is unpredictable. Just wake up every day and say thank you and keep moving because you never know what can happen. Please, something good come out of this. Her story is beyond miraculous. Despite her battle with PTSD, Paul says that she's pursuing a career in psychology to help others and to raise awareness about mental health. Meanwhile, rescue efforts continue in Haiti tonight as tropical depression Grace bears down. A state of emergency has been declared as the death toll rises above 1,200. Today, the U.S. Coast Guard helping crews and residents dig through the rubble to find anyone who may still be trapped and to evacuate those who are injured. Makeshift hospitals are now being formed out in the open air. One man and his family have been using their personal van as an ambulance to help rescue residents. The hospital has been really packed and um, we've been uh, taking people from the airport coming from Port-au-Prince. We can't even count how many people we've been helping. So far, more than 3,500 homes have been destroyed. Many are now living out of makeshift tents as that tropical weather sweeps across the nation. Turning now to stories making headlines around Texas. Houston police have released security video of a mother and her children being robbed at gunpoint, hoping anyone can help them make an arrest. It was on July 27th. Police say the mother was picking up her husband from work at this gas station when a man came up to her vehicle, opened the door and pointed his gun at her head. The woman's two daughters were sitting in the back seat. The thief got away with the woman's purse and $400 speeding off in a black Honda Civic. Anyone with information on this crime is asked to contact Crime Stoppers of Houston. Over on Lake Conroe in Montgomery County, one person was killed after a boat with more than 50 people on board capsized last night. Take a look. Authorities say thunderstorms sent four to five foot waves crashing into the boat, causing it to overturn. Everyone was eventually pulled from the water, including a one and a half year old child. No other details have been released about the person who died. Take a look at this video right here on your screen from Austin. Today's storms springing a leak at the Capitol building, causing the halls to flood. This video was shot by Sloan Byerly, chief of staff for the Texas House of Representatives. In a recent tweet, Governor Greg Abbott said that the State Preservation Board is working to address the issues.
Yeah, there were a couple of colliding thunder showers up uh, over Austin this afternoon. They were producing really heavy rain, not moving very fast, and that is what led to the flooding. Uh, we had our own round of heavy rain this afternoon. Thankfully, though, those pop up thunder showers today moved along. They were still moving pretty slow, but they moved along at a good enough pace that we avoided any flooding issues here locally. Always a good thing and some lucky yards picked up a little bit of rain out there. Now we're in the mid 70s, partly to mostly cloudy skies and calm winds. We are going to see a quiet stretch of weather overnight to start the work week, but a couple of more thunder showers will be possible for some of us tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about that, how that plays into the upcoming work and school week for you. And I also have an update on the tropics. Things are getting busy. A new tropical depression breaking just within the last couple of minutes and the latest track for tropical depression grace, which could wander into the Gulf later this week. All that and more coming up in just a bit. Yesterday, President Joe Biden announced troops are headed back to Afghanistan, and today we learned even more troops are set to deploy their mission, plus the latest on the Taliban's push to control that country. Also, the success rate for organ donation increases when the recipient and donor are the same ethnicity, yet only 32 percent of people of color sign up to donate. We'll break down the myths that are stopping people from one day possibly saving a life. And the more contagious Delta variant continues to spread as more businesses and services nationwide are requiring proof of vaccination. The latest in the fight against COVID-19 when the night beat continues. Turning to the coronavirus and the latest numbers for Bear County. As of Friday, the seven-day average of COVID-19 infections was at 1,391. And in our hospitals, 1,299. And with 33 in the ICU, 214 on ventilators. And as the Delta variant continues to surge across the country, hospitals are running out of beds. A majority of the COVID patients currently hospitalized are unvaccinated, but vaccinations are increasing. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw with the details. Cases of COVID-19 continue to surge across the country, fueled by the highly contagious Delta variant. The U.S. daily case average jumping over 15% in the last week and over 900% higher since mid-June. Florida seeing more than 151,000 new cases in the past week, more than 15,700 people hospitalized. In Texas, more than 11,000 hospitalizations and over 21,000 new cases approaching the state record from January. Oregon now sending in 1,500 National Guard members to help hospital staff. When our hospitals are full with COVID-19 patients, there may not be a room for someone needing care after a car crash, a heart attack, or other emergency situation. Just over 59% of Americans over the age of 12 are fully vaccinated. A lot of the people that are not vaccinated are getting hospitalized and it's 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 younger people this time, so that's what makes it scary. But vaccinations are on the rise. The White House reporting nearly 1 million doses were administered on Friday. Beginning Monday, New York City will require proof of vaccination for many indoor activities, including restaurants, gyms, and theaters. As the new school year gets underway, the debate over masks continues. We know that the combination of masking, social distancing, testing, and vaccinating those who are eligible will mean that we can create a safe learning environment for our kids. Several school districts in Florida and Texas have mandated masks, defying orders from their governors. Oregon's governor is also requesting FEMA support and funding. She says the frustrating reality is that the Delta variant has changed everything. And like leaders across the country, she is urging people to get vaccinated and wear a mask. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's nice to see the rain return today. Not everybody got in on the action, though. We had some heavy downpours downtown. I made it out to my house in between shows and super dry out. There. Yeah, no, when I was at the station, though, I had to stay in the car for an exact probably an additional 15 minutes. I yeah. didn't want to get washed out. Came down pretty hard here. <laughs> Waterfall. There was very heavy rain just north of downtown up to about the airport, and it sat there for a good half hour, almost 40 minutes. Uh, but check it out at the airport. Not even a quarter inch of rain. 0.15 recorded there today. 95 was our high temperature before those outflow boundaries and resulting thunder showers moved through this afternoon. And Tim's right, not everyone one cashed in on rainfall today, but where we did have those thunder showers pop up, uh, the rain was heavy. So where you see this yellow color here, radar estimates that's two plus inches of rain. In fact, across a portion of northwestern uh, Bandera.
Bandera County. More than three inches of rain there, 2.6 inches estimated uh, just uh, north of Medina Lake off to the east of Medina. And we had some nice yellow color up in portions of Kindle, Blanco County as well uh, near Blanco there. 2.9 inches of rain estimated uh, estimated by the radar. We'll zoom in a little closer and things were even more hit or miss as you get a little bit tighter in here around San Antonio in Bear County. Um, almost park here just north of downtown right along 281. Radar estimates nearly three inches of rain there, but then as you get off farther to the east just by a bit closer to Terrell Hills, a uh, less than an inch of rain there. So rain today was very, very hit or miss and we could see a similar scenario tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures currently 74 New Braunfels, 79 in Pleasanton. So you can kind of tell the areas that maybe picked up a little bit of rain. Temperatures are already in the mid 70s. Elsewhere, still in the upper 70s, even the 80s, off in Del Rio, where it was a rain free day in Valverde County. Still plenty of cloud cover out there, um, and we're going to hold on to mostly to partly cloudy skies through the overnight hours. As far as any rain currently, there was a little bit of light lingering rain about an hour, hour and a half ago. But what you're seeing here is just some ground clutter from our radar site in New Braunfels off to the west of 35. Things are quiet, also very quiet down closer to the Gulf Coast, uh, where there were some pretty intense thunderstorms earlier this evening, but now all is quiet and will be rain free through the overnight hours again, partly to mostly cloudy skies. I do think by the time the sun comes up in the morning, skies will be partly cloudy to mostly clear winds, light and variable overnight. And I do think that will result in some patchy fog here or there, especially for areas that saw rain today. Um, ground will be a little bit more saturated. That'll make it easier for some fog to develop. So keep that in mind for tomorrow morning. And of course, Mike will have the latest visibility for you coming up on GMSA 75 our morning low here in San Antonio. We'll pop back into the 90s tomorrow afternoon as we see a good mix of sun and clouds. This is painting a lot of cloud cover, but I do expect that we'll see partly cloudy skies into Monday afternoon. As we heat up, we'll have a couple more scattered showers and non severe storms, slightly lower coverage overall when you look at radar as a whole tomorrow as compared to what we saw today. But nonetheless, some heavy downpours will be possible and some more non severe storms. Coverage wise, we'll call it about a 40% chance of afternoon rain tomorrow. After that, we just kind of continue to peel back rain chances through the middle of the week. Some spotty activity possible Tuesday and Wednesday, and then mainly just some afternoon coastal showers as we get into the back half of the work and school week. So overall this week, Aside from tomorrow's afternoon activity, it's going to be pretty quiet. Uh, not the case out in the tropics. Now three systems that the National Hurricane Center is watching. Fred expected to make landfall tomorrow. We've got Tropical Depression Grace in the Caribbean and a new tropical depression that just formed tonight. So Fred is expected to make landfall along the Florida Gulf Coast tomorrow as a tropical storm. Thankfully, this new tropical depression eight is going to stick out over the open Atlantic. It'll be Bermuda's problem for several more days. But Grace is the system that has more folks attention here as the latest forecast cone from the Hurricane Center does bring this system into the Gulf of Mexico by late in the week. This is Friday. And I've overlaid the spaghetti plots for you here just so you can see the model consensus keeping this farther south closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. So this is not a big concern for the Texas Gulf Coast at this time, but of course we will monitor it for you in the week ahead and provide updates each and every day. Another look at your day tomorrow 94 the high with a 40% chance of afternoon thunder showers. Mainly though this week the big story is that August summertime sizzle. All yes. right now Katie, you've got to keep that umbrella handy though. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Katie. Even more troops heading to Afghanistan to assist with a mass evacuation there as the Taliban moves to control the region. That story and more coming up after a preview of Instant Replay. That's right after this. The Dallas Cowboys and now the Houston Texans have preseason games under their belt. So who performed well? With more on that and what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg. Simmons. I can tell you who didn't, and that was the backup <laughs> center. <laughs> Need to work on that some. And the Spurs Summer League games continue from Las Vegas, coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Curse is there, Parsons is there, and Curse pulled the football out. It looks like the Cowboys have it. The Dallas Cowboys defense is ahead of the Cowboys offense, especially with Dak still sideline. That was evident at the start of their preseason game number two against the Cardinals in Arizona. But the Cowboys did get some good news regarding Prescott's recovery from a strained muscle in his throwing shoulder. He is playing like many of these Texans are, with a chip on their shoulder and something to prove. Play action. Taylor in the pocket to the sideline. Conley again. 
Now, with Deshaun Watson still very much a question mark for this coming season, the rest of the Texans quarterbacks got a you know, like, great workout. Dyrod Taylor started. But how did the rookie Davis Mills look in his NFL debut against the Green Bay Packers? We will show you. He wants to score this ball, but yes. Oh, Through the no. legs, the three is up and oh, rattles home. Oh. And the Spurs continue their summer league play tonight in Las Vegas as they take on the Brooklyn Nets before the final game tomorrow. We have all the highlights. All that plus, Joshua Franco wins another trilogy match last night. And who should be the backup quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys tonight? You decide. Instant Replay is live, and it's after the night beat. We give you several choices. Lots to talk about. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. We'll sure. see you in just a little bit. We'll see you right after this. The Taliban now in control of Afghanistan after taking the capital city of Kabul today. Yes, officials say the U.S. will be sending even more troops now to evacuate thousands of American citizens, as well as locals employed by U.S. mission in Kabul and their families. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert with the details. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul urging Americans to shelter in place after the Afghan capital and last government stronghold fell to the Taliban. This footage from Al Jazeera appears to show Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace declaring the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Nearly all of the country seized by the Taliban in just over a week. President Ashraf Ghani fleeing as the American presence in Afghanistan winds down. We went to Afghanistan 20 years ago. Uh, with one mission in mind, and that was to deal with the people who attacked us on 9-11. Uh, and that mission has been successful. President Biden sending more troops, a total of 6,000 to help speed up the emergency evacuation of U.S. personnel and some Afghan visa applicants. Embassy staff were told to destroy sensitive equipment and documents. The American flag lowered. The ambassador and embassy operations moved to the airport for safety. President Biden briefed by his national security team on Sunday, including General Kenneth McKenzie, the head of U.S. Central Command, who met with the Taliban in Doha on Sunday, warning them not to interfere with the U.S. mission as they work to get everyone out of Afghanistan. On the streets of Kabul, fear and uncertainty. Long lines at banks as residents look to withdraw their life savings. Desperate scenes at the border with Pakistan and chaos at the airport as thousands look to flee. Women, especially the girls who have grown up with freedom and rights, are now worried that could change. Yet some are defiant. I'm not afraid of them. We are not the people who will, you know, go back to the dark era. I'm a girl and I don't care about anyone. But what should I be scared of? This is my homeland, my land. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Meanwhile, taking a look at headlines around America tonight, wildfires in California and Utah continue to rage this weekend, forcing thousands of people to evacuate their homes. In particular, the Parley's Canyon fire east of Salt Lake City has forced more than 6,000 evacuations. Just this weekend, that fire swelled to more than 2,500 acres and continues to threaten thousands more homes and even a busy interstate. Also in the fire's path, several power lines, which could cause even further struggle for nearby communities. So far, no injuries have been reported. And in Arizona, we've learned at least two people have died and more than 30 have been rescued as a result of severe flooding in the Gila Bend near Phoenix. Local authorities there say more than 100 people have been displaced from their homes, overtaken by rushing water. Many people there are still missing, though it's not clear exactly how many. A state emergency has been declared for the region. Meanwhile, back here at home, we got some rain today. Thankfully, not that much rain left with some lingering cloud cover tonight. Very humid conditions, but the rain from earlier in the day has wrapped up and we've got quiet weather heading your way through the overnight hours and the start of the day Monday. High temperatures today, we all made it, in, with the exception of Fredericksburg, we all made it into the 90s today. Um, before the rain set in, also Rock Springs, you've made it up to 86. Fredericksburg, 87 before the rain this afternoon. Spots that didn't see rain, like Catula Del Rio made it up to the triple digits. 90 the high in OKC, 102 the high in Bismarck, thanks to a ridge of high pressure there. 95 the high in Portland as well. Same as us here in the Alamo City. Weather across the country tonight. Uh, we've got the heavy rain across portions of the desert southwest up through the Rockies there. Some rain across the deep south. We've got Tropical Storm Fred making landfall tomorrow along the Florida Gulf Coast and a Tropical Depression Grace in the Caribbean. Not quite in the realm of our radar just yet. Grace is expected to wander into the Gulf later this week. We'll take another look at this forecast track, talk a little bit more about what we can expect here over the next few days coming up in the, just a little bit. Daphne. 
Thank you, Katie. Now more than ever, it's important for people of color to register as organ donors. We'll explain why next on The Night Beat. Every year, thousands of people await a new heart, lungs, kidneys, and more for various reasons. Yeah, the list of organ donors doesn't always meet the demand, though, and that shows even more when it comes to minority donors. KSAT producer Alexis Page shows us why it's important for people of color to become a donor. A hundred and ten thousand. That's the number of adults and children who are on the National Organ Donor Wait List something the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance, or TOSA, works hard to bring down every year. And we basically provide uh, organ donation and recovery services for those Central and South Texans wishing to donate and for those waiting on the waiting list. Clarissa Thompson, the Senior Communications Coordinator at TOSA, says for the month of August, they are focusing on the 60 percent of people of color on the waiting list. It's all a part of National Minority Donor Awareness Month. Even though... Um, you do not have to be of the same ethnicity, the donor and the recipient. We do find that there are studies that say that the transplants tend to be more successful when the donor and the recipient share similar genetics. In 2012, Martha Kaiser's daughter, Chrysia Kaiser, signed up to be an organ donor while getting her driver's license. That night we talked about it, about her decision during dinner, and uh, she expressed her desire to be a donor if something was to happen to her. Crecia suffered a brain aneurysm, passing away on June 6, 2013. Martha says at that time, her daughter being an organ donor was the last thing on her mind. She uh, actually said no, <laughs> but then uh, one of the representatives from TOSA took us into a separate room and very gently uh, told us about the whole process and about Crecia's decision. And with 22,000 people on the waiting list who are Hispanic, Crecia's background was a great addition. In fact, Crecia donated her kidneys and pancreas to a Hispanic man who had complications with his diabetes, someone Martha has had the pleasure of meeting. It's just overwhelming seeing how Crecia's recipients have flourished from being so... Um, suffering from all these illnesses. People of color, like Crecia, only make up 32% of the donor list. Thompson chalks that up to the misconceptions that surround becoming an organ donor. Doctors will not save my life if I may, if I'm an organ donor, if I've signed up to save lives as an organ donor. And that is not the case. Donation is only considered after every life-saving effort has occurred. Another myth is that it will affect the funeral service. That's a myth that Martha can disprove. We had open casket for Crisia. Uh, she looked as beautiful as she always did. Uh, she looked like she was just a beauty sleeping. Martha works closely with Tosa to share Crisia's story and to show that even though she left sooner than expected, she completed her mission. And that was to give that gift of life. So it makes us very proud that, that uh, at such young age, she made that decision and that she was able to achieve that uh, wish. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. Now you can be approved to be an organ donor within 48 hours after signing up. The only requirement is that you have to be at least 18 years old. And for a link to sign up, head to KSAT.com. Think your iPhone and MacBook are safe from hackers? Well, the hackers are here to debunk the myth that Apple security can't be breached. How you can protect your devices next. For a long time now, Apple's reputation was that they were untouchable when it came to cyber threats and malware because they were just too tough to hack. Not anymore. Recent attacks against Apple products are stirring some concern. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on what you can do to keep your Apple devices safe. 
Mark Doherty is a longtime Apple guy. I've always thought Apple products were safer. That's why I went with them to begin with. But tech experts say that all connected tech carry some level of risk. In fact, during the past year, Apple has rolled out a slew of software updates to fix flaws and even some critical vulnerabilities, including at least one that could have left Apple users susceptible to dangerous malware had the patch not been installed. Don't ignore operating system and app updates. This is where known security flaws are fixed, but it's up to you to install them. To be sure your iPhone or iPad is up to date, go to Settings, General, Software Update. On a Mac computer, go to Launchpad, System Preferences, Software Update. And if your device isn't getting OS updates because it's too old, it's time to replace it. One of the more common ways hackers get the goods is through phishing, so be careful what you click. Most of the time, cyber criminals can only get access to your device if you give them a way in, say by clicking on a malicious link, or an attachment in an email, or even a social media post. And if you thought Apple products don't need antivirus software, think again. Consumer Reports recommends AVG Antivirus for Mac. It's free. On your iPhone, antivirus software can do things like block malicious websites, calls, and texts. But because of Apple's security restrictions, antivirus software can't scan iPhones for viruses. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look at weather right now, I'm telling you, it was so active today. My phone was going off the chain <laughs> with the Weather Authority app. Yep. Rain detected here. And that, lightning detected there. The lightning. Yeah. <laughs> that really comes in handy during the summer. I know folks oh, yeah. were out on the lakes and rivers and by the pool today. So hopefully you have that KSAP weather app on your phone and you got those alerts and you could get everybody inside while those storms rolled on through. We have another app, Jaffney. We have the KSAT Hurricane Tracker app. What? Yes. So I know a lot of folks, especially during hurricane season, just want to keep tabs on the different systems that are out across the Atlantic Basin because it covers a a lot of real estate. We're talking the whole Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so you may want to have that app downloaded as well. And things are starting to get busy out in the Atlantic Basin. Now, as of just about 10 o'clock tonight, three areas that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring. Tropical Storm Fred, closest to the U.S. coastline at this point. We've also got Tropical Depression Grace moving into the Caribbean and a new Tropical Depression. That's Tropical Depression 8. Um, if it gets a name, it would be our H name, and I looked up the pronunciation. This is going to be Henri, so not Henry, Henri. Let's hope it's not Ornery. <laughs> Tim said, let's hope it's not ornery. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so if that Tropical Depression 8 can reach Tropical Storm status, it would take the name Henri, and we will continue on from there. Really, it's not terribly surprising that we've got three systems out in the Atlantic Basin. This graph does show that the number of hurricanes and tropical storms, also just hurricanes here in yellow, does tend to peak late August through the middle of September. So we are approaching busy season uh, and hurricane season out in the Atlantic Basin. I want to focus on Tropical Depression Grace. This is a system that you are no doubtedly um, going to hear hear a lot about this week. People are going to be posting images of the forecast cone because it does go into the Gulf of Mexico, but let's really break this down here. So over the next several days through the middle of the week, Tropical Depression Grace is going to be fighting the terrain in the Caribbean, places like the Dominican Republic, Haiti. Unfortunately, they'll have to deal with that as they're cleaning up from the earthquake over Cuba. And then eventually by late Wednesday into Thursday, it gets into the open waters of the Gulf. So tropical systems don't like interaction with land. So that likely is going to keep this tropical system in a very weakened, raggedy state until late Wednesday into Thursday. Then it gets into the warm waters of the Gulf. And from there, that's when we could start to see some more intensification. And that will be quite telling as to where this system will go. We're also going to need to watch other meteorological trends over the next several days. What other steering factors will be in place as we get closer to late this week? But for now, the latest forecast cone from the Hurricane Center does bring this tropical system into the Gulf by Friday. And this is my soapbox with the cones here during hurricane season. Remember, this cone means that the center of circulation with the system could be all the way down here or as far north uh, 
as there. So the cone does cover a wide area, meaning there is a lot of room for error. Here are the spaghetti plots, and they do favor a more southern track through the far southern Gulf of Mexico over the Yucatan Peninsula. So that's where things stand currently. Still several days to watch that system, and we will, of course, be keeping you updated. You can find the latest updates on the Hurricane Tracker app as well. 75 now at the airport, 84 in Catula, still mid to upper 80s out in Del Rio. It is really muggy. We've got dew points in the 60s and 70s, and our Winds for the most part are on the lighter side here in San Antonio and Gonzales, calm winds. So that's why I do think we could see some patchy fog develop through the overnight hours because of the light winds and also the higher humidity. Things will be quiet as far as rainfall goes overnight, partly to mostly cloudy skies and again some patchy fog not out of the question through early tomorrow. As we heat up tomorrow afternoon, a little bit of leftover rain making energy will result in more scattered showers and non severe storms. should be slightly lower in coverage than what we saw today, but we'll call it about a 40% chance coverage wise for some afternoon thunder showers. Just like today, no severe weather expected, but some heavy rain flashes of lightning certainly possible after that. We scale back rain chances for the rest of the upcoming work and school week. Guys, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. The Suicide Squad take a huge hit as an unexpected new hero rises to the top. Your weekend box office report is next. I think it's trying to get out. The Suicide Squad fell from first to fifth place with $7.8 million, a 70% drop from its debut weekend. The Aretha Franklin biopic Respect opened in fourth place to the tune of $8.8 .8 million. Jungle Cruise was the top returning movie, taking third with $9 million. It's not me you need to be scared of, little girl, but the man standing next to you. The horror thriller sequel Don't Breathe 2 made $10.6 million to debut in second place. Wow. Audiences paid up to see Free Guy. The comedy adventure starring Ryan Reynolds opened at the top, scoring $28.4 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Is that a Glock? Apparently, Jaffney is going to be very busy watching these <laughs> Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> a dominating performance by world champion Joshua Franco in his trilogy with Andrew Maloney. And the Hard Knocks cameras caught Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy asking for something from Austin Powers for his workouts. With more on what's on Insta Replay, let's head over to our Greg Simmons. How can you not like a coach who likes Austin Powers, right? Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and are the Spurs done with their wheeling and dealing for the roster this offseason? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. What do you see in your future? Uh, I see bigger fights. Uh, I see Chocolatito, Guy Estrada, uh, Ioka, and Cajas, any of the fighters I want to I unify. Well, Professor lived up to his nickname as he taught Andrew Maloney how to dominate in the ring, winning by unanimous decision and keeping his WBA championship belt. We'll show you how he did it and what is Dallas head coach Mike McCarthy asking from his players from Austin Powers that is caught on the HBO Hard Knocks cameras. Here's Jones in the open floor. Oh, That's okay. up and in. What great touch Come by on, Trey man. Jones. Are the Spurs done wheeling and dealing to get their roster ready for the 2021-2022 season? The sports guys are back tonight with their opinions. And don't look now. High school volleyball is already underway. Our Larry Ramirez with that story. And COVID hits San Antonio FC, forcing the postponement of at least one game. We got the details. Instant replay is live. And it's next. And this outbreak is far from over, obviously, now. Still impacting a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. Coming up next, a hero's welcome from a fire captain injured while trying to contain one of those western wildfires. Tell me something good is next.